Professor Mellons, um, we're going to, let's talk about democracy. Can you define democracy for our students? At its core, democracy is simply rule by the people, power to the people. Mm -hmm. And there's different ways to achieve that. The two main ways would be direct democracy, mm -hmm. which is ruled directly by the people. In that context, there's no state legislature, no parliament, no Congress. The people pass laws literally by taking a vote, majority wins. Okay. Uh, another shade of democracy, another way of achieving that goal, would be to have representative democracy. Mm -hmm. In that context, people vote for representatives. Those representatives, they pass laws and rules and policies mm -hmm. for the people, on behalf of the people. Okay. So what are the pros and cons of both systems, direct democracy and representative democracy? Well, it's interesting. Um, they kind of play off of each other when it comes to advantages and disadvantages. Mm -hmm. One of the advantages of direct democracy is that you really have a connection between the policy and the people, because the people are the ones making the policy. Right. So whatever the people want, the people get. Mm -hmm. The downside is just that. Whatever the people want, the people get. So if the people want to take away rights from women, mm -hmm. or from ethnic minorities, or declare Islam not a religion right after 9-11, mm -hmm. then they can do so. Right? So when you think of direct democracy, you typically don't think of liberty and freedom. Right. Another problem with direct democracy is it's really designed for small populations. And the United States of America is very large. So we have over 150 million uh, eligible voters. So direct democracy at the national level is just not workable. Representative democracy fills in that problem, right? So we have a situation where we will have representative democracy because of our large population size. The downside, though, is that you see a disconnect between the people and the policy. So a really good example of that would be uh, background checks for gun owners. The uh, average American has been estimated 90% to be in favor of background checks, yet Congress cannot deliver. Even though Republicans are for it, Democrats are for it, gun owners are for it, Congress just can't do it. And it's because of that disconnect between the people and their government. Professor Mullins, do, do we have any examples of direct democracy in the U.S.? Yes, we do. So usually direct democracy takes place at the state level. Mm -hmm. As I mentioned, direct democracy is for smaller populations. And so uh, states use it a lot to allow their state residents who are eligible to vote to make constitutional changes at the state level and also policy decisions. Mm -hmm. and a really good example would be a lot of these marijuana propositions mm -hmm. that you're seeing uh, throughout the nation. Right. So what can our students do to learn more about this? direct democracy and representative democracy? Well, hopefully this video mm -hmm. has been uh, educational, mm -hmm. but I would, re I would refer students to their textbook. Okay, great. Thanks so much. Thank you.